Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest music love triangles. You all had the same size. We used to kind of nick each other's clothes a lot. No matter what it takes, we're going to keep Fleetwood Mac together, and our breaking up is not going to break up this band. For this list, we'll be ranking noteworthy romantic relationships in the music industry that involved three or more people. We'll be using the term love triangle loosely to include a variety of messy intra and interband relationships. What's your favorite bit of music drama? Sound off in the comments. Number 10, David Crosby, Joni Mitchell, and Graham Nash. I apologize for all of us musicians. We do hog the girls. Full disclosure, we're gonna be discussing a lot of classic rock relationships for this list, with many of our entries here being firmly ensconced within that period of free love and sexual freedom. Case in point, the relatively easygoing affairs folk icon Joni Mitchell had with CNSY members David Crosby and Graham Nash. Mitchell met Crosby not long after the latter left the formative psychedelic rockers The Birds, and the pair were an item briefly prior to the formation of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Mitchell would date Crosby's bandmate Graham Nash for a significantly longer period of time, with both penning songs about each other and the time they spent living under the same roof. Not a lot of jealousy between the guys, it seems. If you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, you cannot lie to them. You blew the trust. Number 9. Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, and Billy Corgan. Who said the 90s were all about feeling alienated and disaffected? The love that bloomed in the grunge scene between whole songwriter Courtney Love and Nirvana's Kurt Cobain has been well documented, but perhaps less known is Love's boyfriend prior to hooking up with the future musical icon. Love had actually been dating Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan for a time. Some sources even say Courtney met Kurt for the first time after a pumpkin show, but the details of their first meeting are fuzzy. Corgan reportedly didn't take to being dumped very well, however, and even allegedly turned down some high-profile touring opportunities in order to lick his emotional wounds and avoid the new happy couple. Number 8. Grace Slick and Jefferson Airplane some bands fight, others make love. Jefferson Airplane did both. Their co-lead singers, Marty Balin and Grace Slick, never quite got along, with the former once declaring, quote, whoever slept with Grace had the power in the band. Grace, for her part, embraced the open sexual politics of the 1960s with a vengeance, and had relationships with the band's drummer Spencer Dryden and bassist Jack Cassidy. Eventually, Slick would have a child with airplane guitarist Paul Kantner, China, and go on to work with various ex-band members with offshoot projects like Starship and Jefferson Starship, all the while remaining a counterculture icon and fashion plate. Number 7. Joey Ramone, Linda Danielle, and Johnny Ramone we're going to keep the aggro going for our next entry, this time turning to a punk rock meeting of the hearts and fists. A fight was what allegedly broke out between Ramones members Joey and Johnny after the former's girlfriend, Linda Danielle, left him for Johnny. There was definite bad blood between the Ramones members, although Johnny and Danielle did go on to get married and stay that way until his death in 2004. Joey, for his part, reportedly lost the fight, but won the war, as the spat ended up fueling his lyrics to one of the Ramones' best songs, The KKK Took My Baby Away. Number 6. Todd Rundgren, B.B. Buell, and Steven Tyler Classic rockers and Playboy playmates are two great things that go great together. 
or perhaps not so great if you're worried about paternity issues. I've been involved in music from a very early age. It's an addiction. Some right. people like drugs. I'm a vinyl junkie. B.B. Buell spent much of her romantic life in the company of musicians, most notably with prog and psych pioneer Todd Rundgren. But can we still be friends? However, Buell was also involved with other famous musicians such as David Bowie, Jimmy Page, and Steven Tyler. It was during a brief fling with Tyler when her daughter Liv was born, but early on, Buell and Rundgren actually raised the girl as their own, due to Tyler's continuing battles with substance abuse. It wasn't until years later when the truth finally surfaced, and Liv Rundgren became the Liv Tyler we know and love today. Number 5. Brian Jones, Anita Pallenberg, and Keith Richards the Rolling Stones are no strangers to love triangles, such as the one between Mick Jagger, Marianne Faithful, and Keith Richards. But we're going to be discussing a different one for our next entry. Oh, don't worry, good old Keith is still involved. Only this time it's with Stones founder Brian Jones and actress model Anita Pallenberg. Brian and Anita were a hot ticket for a time, but Jones's escalating drug dependency and increasingly erratic behavior pushed Pallenberg into the arms of Richards. The pair had three children together and remained friends, but ultimately parted ways as a romantic couple. We, we, you all had the same size. We used to kind of nick each other's clothes a lot. Number four, the Mamas and the Papas. The Mamas and the Papas were a vocal group of beautiful and talented people, with a lot of drama. There's the split of married couple John and Michelle Phillips, and the latter's subsequent affair with bandmate Denny Doherty. There's Mama Cass's unrequited love for Doherty. And then there's also the new Mamas and the Papas, a lineup variant of the group that John Phillips put together with his daughter Mackenzie. Reports of impropriety have dogged the singer for years. It's the sort of convoluted mess that could have only been birthed in the late 60s and 70s. Number 3. Tommy Lee, Pamela Anderson, and Kid Rock Can't we all just get along? If you're asking this question to Kid Rock and Tommy Lee, then the answer is definitely no. Rock and Anderson had the same sort of hot and heavy marriage the former Baywatch actress had with Tommy Lee, although the coupling did result in two children. Lee and Anderson reportedly kept seeing each other on and off after splitting up, and this did not go over well when she and Rock divorced in 2006. The Ba Wada Ba singer and Motley Crue drummer came to blows at the VMAs a year later in a display that felt more like a schoolyard spat than anything resembling rock and roll debauchery. Number 2. Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, and Mick Fleetwood No matter what it takes, we're gonna keep Fleetwood Mac together. And our breaking up is not gonna break up this band. It's one of the most high profile splits in classic rock history. A true tale of romantic entanglement and drama bleeding out onto the stage. Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were a romantically linked folk rock duo prior to joining the ranks of British blues legends Fleetwood Mac in 1975. The band already featured another married couple in the form of John and Christine McVie, but it wasn't long before both that couple and Buckingham Nicks went their separate ways. Then, during the tour cycle for the band's classic album Rumors, Nix began an affair with the married Mick Fleetwood, adding more fuel to the fire of Mac's stranger than fiction story of love, loss, and music. Because really, the band meant everything, and the band was way more important than each separate person's problems. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions Josh Homme, Brody Dahl, and Tim Armstrong. Punk rock couple splits. Doll heads for the Stone Age. The poison between Richie Kotzen and Ricky Rocket. Note to self, when joining a new band, don't sleep with your drummer's girlfriend. Want more mojo? Sound Mojo brings you music from new and emerging artists in all genres from across the globe. From interviews to live shows and deep dives into music culture, Sound Mojo has you covered. 
be sure to check out SoundMojo to find your new favorite artists. Number one, George Harrison, Patty Boyd, and Eric Clapton. It's one of the most famous classic rock songs of all time, a lovelorn ode to the wife of a good friend. Layla was written by guitar legend Eric Clapton while he was playing with Derek and the Dominoes, a plea to Patty Boyd, then wife of another musical icon, George Harrison. I'm singing the way she woos me. Truth be told, the Beatles guitarist and his wife were going through a rough patch, and the song was a perfect way for Clapton to bridge the gap between fantasy and reality. He really wanted me to come away with him. Mm although I was most insistent that I was still married to George, so it was really difficult. Layla did its job, and Clapton would also be inspired by Boyd for the track Wonderful Tonight, although the couple would eventually divorce by the late 80s. You look wonderful tonight. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.